Hi there. In today's video, I will discuss what exactly do we mean by the rising and the setting of a star. In the last video, I discussed the basic ideas that led us to the celestial sphere. If you haven't watched that video, I suggest you click on the screen link and watch that first. The key takeaways from the last video were first, all motion is relative. Second, we study the motion of stars relative to the Earth. Third, as seen from the Earth, the stars seem to move in a hemispherical dome, which is half of the celestial sphere. With these ideas firmly understood, we are now ready to deal with the dance of the stars. Before we start talking of star motion, we need to review the basic ideas of latitudes, local vertical and local horizon. I trust that all of you know what a latitude is. However, it never hurts to review a few things. A latitude is a circle drawn on the Earth's surface that is perpendicular to the north-south line. As you can see, depending on where we draw the latitude circle, the size of the circle varies. The largest latitude is called the equator. The plane containing the equator is called the equatorial plane. So how do we name a latitude? For this, join all the points on the latitude circle to the center of the Earth. You can see that this creates a cone. The angle that the slant side of this cone makes with the equatorial plane is called the angle of that latitude. In addition, we mention north or south depending on whether the latitude is in the northern or in the southern hemisphere. For example, a latitude of 30 degree north refers to the circle of latitude in the northern hemisphere which subtends a cone at the center of the earth such that its slant side makes an angle of 30 degrees with the equatorial plane. Similar is the interpretation for say a latitude of 60 degrees south. The equator obviously is 0 degree. Having understood what a latitude is, we move to the idea of the local vertical. The line joining the center of Earth to a point P on the Earth's surface defines the local vertical at P. The plane perpendicular to the local vertical is the local horizontal plane. This is nearly the plane that a woman standing on the Earth's surface perceives as the horizontal. It is this horizontal plane that we are interested in for viewing the star motion. One word of caution though, the local horizontal is different at different latitudes. Hence, the sky appears different from different latitudes. We must always note our latitude when observing the sky. Now, imagine a woman standing somewhere on the earth looking up at the skies. We will try to see things from her perspective in what is called the local horizon view. I will now shift between the celestial sphere view and the horizon view from various latitudes. So, the local horizon view shows us the view that a woman standing 
at the white dot sees around herself. You can see the woman as a stick figure in the middle. The green plane is the local horizon plane. You can see the north, south, east and west marked on the local horizon. The boundary of the green plane is the horizon that the woman sees. Note in particular the eastern and the western horizon. So how do stars move? Just two more terms and we will be able to discuss that. The points where the north-south line of Earth intersects the celestial sphere are called the north and south celestial poles respectively. They are shown as the blue sticks on the celestial sphere. And now finally, I can tell you about the motion of stars. We will restrict ourselves to the northern hemisphere for now. As seen from the Earth, all stars seem to move in circles perpendicular to the celestial north-south line. Seen from the ground, the stars seem to be moving in circular paths around the north celestial pole. The north celestial pole can be located roughly by the location of the pole star. Look at this photograph. I trust the majority of you would have seen this many times. Just ask yourself, how many times have you seen photographs like this, where the circular paths of the stars were always there for you to see? How many times did you really pay any attention? Coming back, in the northern hemisphere, stars move anticlockwise around the north celestial pole. When the star crosses the eastern horizon, we say it rises. And when it finally crosses the western horizon, we say it has set. When it goes below the western horizon, it is not visible to us anymore till it travels back to the eastern horizon and rises again. And this repeats over and over again. This is what is meant by the rising and the setting of a star. This is the view towards the eastern horizon where you can see all the stars rising. This is the motion of the stars fast forwarded in time. This shows the view of the western horizon where all the stars are setting. Now I will show you the celestial sphere view and the horizon view side by side. You can see how in the celestial sphere view the stars are stationary and the earth moves relative to them. It is exactly this that causes the star paths that we then see on the earth. I will now show you some animations that include both the views for you to develop some intuition about star motion. I have included some random stars as well as well-known constellations like Orion, Big Dipper, etc. We will continue our discussion post panel. Did you see some stars that never rose and never set? Find out on the internet what such stars are called. Also, try to figure out what will be the view in the southern hemisphere. You can leave your thoughts in the comment section below. In the next and final video of the series, we will focus on the sun and how the sun moves across the sky throughout the year. And finally, I will answer the question, does the sun really rise in the east? Till then, goodbye. Stay safe, stay healthy you all.